What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today's episode is brought to you by DraftKings. Today, we're going to go over to bat from game one of the ALCS featuring our guy, Randy Arozarena. Now, I want to give you a little bit of backstory on him because, like many Cuban baseball players, his story is amazing. Now, he was starting at second base for the Cuban national team and felt like they might be leaving him behind. In that moment, he had to make a decision. Um, do I defect? Do I stay here? What do I do? Now, Randy's father unfortunately passed away when he was 19 due to an allergic reaction. And he says that kind of forced his decision where he wanted to pursue his dream of coming to America to play in the big leagues. Now, it's not as easy as it sounds. He, obviously, he has to defect from Cuba. So he got in what he describes as a glorified kayak across the Gulf of Mexico to Mexico. Um, when he was in the middle of the Gulf, all he could think about was surviving. That's all he cared about at that moment. Lucky for him, lucky for us, he survived, got to Mexico, and started the process of defecting. Now, that process takes a while, so it takes over a year. So during that time, he was down in Mexico playing in the Mexican League, and many big league organizations were keeping tabs on him. He ends up signing with the St. Louis Cardinals and going into their minor league system. A couple years there, he performs great, finally gets the call in 2019 to come up to the big leagues and in a small sample size does really well. Well, the Rays pay attention to stuff like that and they went out and traded for him along with Jose Martinez and a supplemental first round draft pick. Sent the Cardinals, Matt Libertor, a second round supplemental draft pick and the rest is history. The Rays had Randy at their alternate site most of the year and then on August 29th called him up to the big leagues where he has essentially become a star right in front of our eyes. Performed well during the end of the regular season and now in the playoffs has done everything the Rays have asked and more. This is a, a great story, something I really wanted to get into, but it's really hard to do it in this short time. So I think we're probably going to end up doing something more on this guy just because the story is so good. Now this at bat is awesome. I can't wait to bring it to you. With all that being said, let's go. All right, here we go with the at bat. There is my guy, Framber. As much as I love... A Rose Rainier, I also love Framber. We've been on him for a long time. He's a great pitcher. He s features a sinker and a slur. If he can add and subtract both of those pitches, and he's just been pitching really well all season and the postseason. They've really been reliant on Framber. Now, he's had a quick work through three innings here. He's looked really good, but in walks big bad Randy. Here's the first pitch. Slurve down and in. Off the plate easy take for Randy. And that's kind of how I would approach Randy if I was Maldonado. Big curves down in the zone. You don't want that fastball elevated with him. So here's the 1-0. Both guys working quickly. I love it. Maldonado says, hey, deep breath. Let's get this right. So here we go approaching on the 1-0 pitch. And he's calling for an off speed again. There's a slurve. A little bit slower there, a little bit more depth, kind of curvy, and Randy swings right through it. Big hack, because that's what Randy does. But now it is one and one. Framber getting better as he faces the lineup, which is crazy to me. That is the exact opposite of most pitchers, but Framber is different. So here comes the one, one pitch, two off speed pitches in a row, and there they go up and in. Now we've seen Garrett Cole try to attack him the exact same way. He actually hit Randy with that pitch, but teams want to get him off the plate. He gets on the plate, wants to swing big, and that's their approach. Now, here comes the one-two pitch. Both guys working very quickly, like I said. Slow curve, and Randy pulls it foul. It's another great pitch right there, but Randy's doing really well. He's fouling the pitches off that he needs to foul off. Now, we're going to see some of the – that's both his – that's slider, both of those pitches there. And they can do different things. Here's his curveball and his sinker. Big discrepancy in the speed, and that's really tough for a hitter. So he comes back with another fastball in off that slow curve, and now Randy's on it. So now you got to make an adjustment. Hey, he's on that fastball in there. We can't go back there. So what do you want to do here? Now, my thinking is let's continue to hammer that low part of the strike zone or even further down with that off-speed pitch. Now, this is important right here. Now, watch this. You saw Maldonado right there. He said, get your elbow up. What he's trying to do here is he's trying to go down and away with the sinker. Now, if you're a sinker ball pitcher, a two-seam pitcher, and you get your elbow down here, it's not going to allow for that depth. 
that vertical movement. It's going to be more side to side. You're going to get some two seam action on it. But what Maldonado wants from Framber here is down and away with sink. Now, he calls for that pitch right away. And I think we're going to see it here. First, Framber says no. I don't want that pitch. He probably wants to go back to the to the curveball. But Maldonado says, yes, we're throwing that pitch. Get your elbow up and execute. And we'll see what he does. There's a shake. He goes back to it. And here we go. Boom. He does not execute. Does he get his elbow up? I don't think he does because if you look at it again, that pitch was up and it stayed up with no vertical movement. And Randy deposits it into right center because he is a beast. Look at him running around. He wants to celebrate with his team. He's been doing this all postseason. A mistake by Framber ties the game up and Randy is doing it again. What a stud. What a great at bat. Adjustments on both sides. It just was one pitch that didn't get put in the spot it was supposed to get put. And here we go. This is what Randy does. Now watch this pitch. Not much vertical action on it. Stays up. And when you throw that pitch to Randy right now, this is what's going to happen. So he doesn't execute the pitch. Randy puts it where he's supposed to put it. Ties the game up. Rays end up winning the game 2-1. to one. Mike Zunino with the RBI single after it. But Randy is a problem. He is fired up. And if you don't know him, you're going to know him. Thank you guys for sticking with us. We'll be back for an- another great episode on Thursday. I hope you had a great start to your week. Peace. Week five of football is in the books, and now it's time to review the tape and get ready for week six. There's no better place to get in on all of the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To add to the excitement of week six, DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing back their can't-miss offer. If you haven't tried DraftKings Sportsbook yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. DraftKings is giving all new users the chance to receive a sign-up bonus up to one thousand. On top of that great sign-up offer, DraftKings offers great odds every Sunday to help you make it rain. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY when you sign up and get up to $1,000. That's code JOHNBOY to get a sign-up bonus up to $1,000 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey only. Bonus compromise of a first deposit bonus and a first bet match each up to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER.